Hello, hello and welcome to another update video about NetGas. So we start on the spot chart. Here I'm still leaning to the idea that um, we are looking for another low, okay, on the NetGas chart, but that would be the completion of a five wave move to the downside of a larger correction actually. I haven't fully labeled the spot chart. Um, we're normally focusing on the futures chart, but if you watched the previous videos on our or our future, our previous net gas videos, then you know that there are some differences between the futures charts and the spot charts. And honestly, the charts have been very boring because most of 2023, um, th this chart or the net gas charts, depending on futures or spots, whatever you're looking at, they um, have spent most of the time just in corrections. So really, really boring really choppy price action, really difficult. It, it's done broadly what we, well, it's done basically exactly what we said it would do. It, it was rising. Yeah, we were expecting a corrective rally in 2023. That happened. We've been tracking it. Um, subwave structures are always messy in corrections, but it's reached our targets. The thing is now, has this wave five to the downside begun? And in our primary scenario, we would like to see another low, um, at least as long as we have only three waves up. This is a three wave structure to the upside that we're watching here. Yeah. A, B, C, or even W, X, Y in a wave four. And we're exploring the idea if a wave five to the downside could have started. It might take us into the region around $1.50. Yeah. Certainly needs to go below the wave three low at a minimum, so below $1.90. Um, <clears throat> the structure is not very clear of the high. So it's only we only see three waves down so far. That leaves the door open for trend continuation higher. Okay, um, but it would need to break above what I have labeled as wave two high to confirm it. That would be a break above $3.30. I haven't got a you know, I haven't got a very clear view of the microstructure. The reason is that what we're dealing with here cannot be an impulse. It can only be a diagonal, most likely. So the idea is we might have uh, seen here wave one, the low in October, a wave two rally. And the third wave should really be unfolding. OK, so if it's a diagonal, I mean, the thing is, this looks like a five wave move. OK, that's could be there for wave one, then it wouldn't be a diagonal, it would be an impulse. Um, but what's coming down here is not impulsive. So difficult, right? Very, very difficult. So I might have to interpret this as an ABC structure then because in a diagonal, um, we're dealing normally with um, three wave structures. Okay, you know, strictly speaking, if this is wave five, down here, and this is all these five waves would only be wave one of wave five, then this could be a leading diagonal. Technically, um, wave one could be a five wave move, you know, but but then with, you know, it just doesn't add up. This is too corrective. So a few ideas I have, for example, we could say that what we're dealing with here is a diagonal structure, um, but that makes it less clear, okay? And then we had ABC to the downside in an A wave. We're now doing a B wave and come down in wave C. So this is, you know, it's not a very clear count and you can basically guarantee this will change because it will always change in diagonals. So that's sort of what I'm, what I see here as a bearish wave count on the net gas chart. We would then need to stay obviously below the $3.30 level. Um, and if we are really in a third wave, then this was A, this was B, then the third wave should really finish somewhere around $2.69 and $2.53 ideally. This is where I would like to see the third wave get to. And we should get a four and a five. So that's sort of the roadmap I'm following for the bearish count. We also have the invalidation point and it will confirm it further below the $2.80 level, the A wave low, should be pretty clear. Now the net gas futures chart shows a more bullish picture. Also here, the expectation of another low is the primary expectation, yeah. Um, I shared with you in previous videos, my view that in an alternative interpretation 
all of this entire correction, yeah, this entire correction, um, it might have completed already. Yeah? So the entire correction could have completed here in April. Or was it, I think it was March, March, April. Anyway, you know, uh, the April, April though, could have complete all of this entire correction could have completed there, but it's not very evident in the chart. And, you know, we've, we've been uh, following this entire move down. We've been very patient on this move down. And we've been quite bearish throughout 2022 into 2023. So it's really looking at the entire distance that it's done. It's really all about, okay, do we get that small, small additional low or not? Uh, it should really do because this move up is very, very much corrective. But we'll see. If anything more bullish shows, we can always pay attention to it. What I want to emphasize here is that this is a more bullish wave count here on the futures chart. Short term bullish. Yeah. Because in this scenario, we can allow it to go still a little higher. A, B, and wave C of this wave 4 um, ending, um, no, of this wave 4 correction. It's a flat structure. And in this wave 4, we're dealing with an ABC structure and the C wave is a diagonal. So we have, therefore, all these overlapping waves. Okay, other interpretations might be possible. Might need to explore this further as we go along um, if it continues to maybe morph around, transform itself. This is what uh, ending diagonals and corrections do. But at the moment, there is a chance, um, or we, we could say, look, we had a wave one, we had a wave two. Um, this could be the A wave of wave three. We're now coming down in the B wave, which might get one more low. And then we could get a C wave in wave three, then a four and a five, and it might complete this entire um, this entire correction. So there's still a little bit more room to the upside. In the short term, if we're dealing with this B wave in wave three, we also have a subwave structure we can observe because a B wave consists of an, typically an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave in the subwaves. And if we then look at this C wave structure here, it's a five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. So it might get one more low. Yeah? It might get one more low. It looks like that. One, two, three, four, five. Into the support area, which is between $2.65 and $2.94. Um, when would I have to say that we are moving up already without getting one more low? Well, it's probably when we are starting to overlap here with wave one. So above $3.31. Let's see. You know, it's not very clear, but against here, against 265 on the futures chart, we could say we're focusing still on higher below that level. We're also breaking out of the trend channel and it might be something more bearish and would then be more in line with the spot chart. So very difficult chart to analyze. Um, <laughs> I have no problem with, with saying that because it is. It's also not the most interesting chart, I have to say. Um, it's very choppy and it will get interesting. It will really get interesting. I mean, this is an opportunity once we have this entire correction completed. Yeah. So then it will get interesting because it might get its last dip. And then the third wave rally is really what we want to participate in. That's my update about the net gas chart. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500, and regular updates about stocks, check out our Stocks and S&P 500 service. You can find the link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.